This is Mary Finch. She's uh, 79 years old, but celebrating her 79th year. And she found this horse caught up in the top of a tree, according to the referring veterinarian. Lead him up a half a step, Eddie, so we can see the inside of that back leg. What's the history on getting into the tree, Mary? Was it a... She rolled over. And forward, Eddie, so I can shoot the back legs. Oh, that's good. The fork of a tree coming out of the ground. Oh, okay. It was a double tree coming out of the ground. I see. And her leg wedged in the fork of the tree. Uh-huh. Her right leg. Okay. And her left leg was in front of the tree, so she rubbed up and down on the back part of her left leg. And okay, let me film that. Okay, now go ahead. You had six men. I had six men. She was down on her right side. Yeah. And her legs were in a bind. And right. they were wedged so tightly we could not move them. Uh-huh. And those men pulled her bodily on the ground. Yeah. Back. Uh, I'm listening. Go ahead. Back. Yeah. And moved her into a different position where they could get her leg out. And okay. Once, once they moved her body... She had thrashed until she had, get, you know, moved her body around, right. pivoted around that tree. Well, you're lucky you don't have more injuries than you do. Why not? Uh, I mean, it's bad, 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 but I thought she was dead. You know, routinely, I never ask how these horses get injured because everybody that comes in here wants to discuss it. So anybody that comes in here now that wants to discuss how this occurred, I'm going to say you can come and get it from the owner on the tape. Okay, this is the left leg we're looking at, and this is just uh, a rubbing wound here, but the tendon looks like it might be showing, huh? Yeah, that's what he thought. That's probably what spooked Dr. Barker, is that tendon sticking out there. And you're a little bit above where you might have a tendon sheath. If you are, then that's a big plus. A lot easier to heal. Um, how long ago did this happen? Uh, last Thursday night. Last Thursday, okay. The 15th, I think it was. I found her Friday morning, the 16th of October. And today's the 20th. Today's the 20th. Right. Well, I'm going to probably give you a lot better prognosis in time. You know, I think you were talking in six months or something. That's what Roger said. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking we can do better than that. But I don't want to be too brave until we get this tendon going our direction. Okay? This is a side view. This is the ten extensor tendon that's protruding out here this far. This wound is a week uh, old prior to coming here. We've got a little bit of granulation maybe started down here, but nothing on the bone yet. I uh, discussed this with the referring veterinarian, and as far as we can tell, maybe there is no scarring in the periosteum on this bone, which may mean there are some divots in it, though. So it may or may not get some uh, avascular necrotic bone occurring here later on. We have some tendon hanging out here. It, uh, the odor that came off the, uh, the bandaging this morning wasn't bad. Corner to see what you're looking at. Man. This is hard to tell whether this tendon's been cut in two or whether this is a part of the tendon sheath that we're looking at. But we have a nice granulation bed and we don't have much odor coming out of here. I'm taking this Q-tip just to clean off all these margins. See how much granulation tissue we've gotten on there. See the tendon is mm -hmm. almost covered with granulation tissue. See all of those tendons are covered with granulation tissue now. This is the 11th day that we've been treating this wound. Uh, we did cut this flap of tissue, the skin that had sloughed off, and uh, you do see that we have some tendon and tendon chief involved in this cut. We've got a nice granulation bed that's up to skin level on this wound, and this would make uh, 11. This is 15 days since this horse got injured. She was brought here 11 days ago. Uh, this is from the outside, and we're up, to we're up to skin level, so we don't want this granulation tissue to grow uh, much more. The bone, uh, the area of exposed bone is uh, continuing to uh, Regress. We still can't make a decision yet about whether we're going to end up with some devitalized or avascular necrotic bone. We, we've had this mare turned out here for about five minutes, and we're just showing how she's walking. This is with no pain medication. I ain't come back, Johnny, and go straight down the fence parallel with me. Yeah, there you go, perpendicular. I don't think it's going to happen. 
That's almost a normal walk there. It's pretty good. Okay, that's fine. We're lucky here. Uh, we've got a tendon that looked like there was a lot of tendon tissue involved in here or so, tendon sheath. All of that's gone and uh, we've got an epithelial border going on around the edge and we don't have that much overgrowth. That's one of the reasons we're changing these bandages around. And, uh, when we started was about as big as a silver dollar and the skin continued to slough from under that uh, uh, from that tree putting pressure on it and this is how big this hole has gotten now but we're not going in forward anymore we are headed in the direction we want to go this uh, is 23 this has been uh, 31 plus 23 days we've been working on this wound and we finally got this hole uh, that was going down to the bone on this leg closed we can't get back to it we are hoping this is one more step forward uh, on not having a piece of avascular necrotic bone. We've been bone. putting um, some tannic acid on this uh, wound to keep it from overgrowing, and this, uh, we've got a pretty good epithelial border started around here. For the size of the granulation bed that we've got and the fact that this wound was started by pressure necrosis to start with um, is probably a factor in the fact that the granulation tissue is not maturing as fast as we want it to. That wound is really beginning to look good. Yeah, it is. Uh, make sure you get all those dry scabs on that epithelial board, Eddie. We're going to start treating uh, that with the ointment. It's at a stage where we can start doing something for it now. Where? <clears throat> Our bandaging here is just uh, Where? netting material with a bounty paper towel saturated in wound Where? wash. Well, the first time we're beginning to get a nice epithelial border up here at the top of this wound, and that's been uh, something we've been waiting for. This pressure necrosis has altered the rate at which this tissue is growing back in, but it's doing better. This is uh, the first day that Mary Finch has ridden this horse. Uh, we've been, in addition to treating her wounds, we've also been working on uh, breaking her. I've had two girls here at the farm. Uh, Solange, we've uh, been treating her wounds in addition to breaking her. This has worked out pretty good. As you remember from the front interview, Mary 79, she allowed she really should be giving up horses, but I think she's finding it hard. This mare is getting ready to go home today. Uh, she's got hung up in a tree and she's been here for her <laughs> since the 20th of November, October, which puts her here for about uh, five and a half months. This wound on her leg, which was all the way down to this the This wound bone. on the back leg uh, was a major one, and it was pressure necrosis that we were dealing with. We never have had to ever cut any pride flesh off of here. We do have quite a bit of scar tissue, and I think that was because this wound healed differently as a result of pressure necrosis. The other ankle at one time had tendon and tendon sheath hanging out, and this mare was in a round pen. Uh, today and broke this open, but other than that, that wound is completely closed now. And she is 100% sound. This is a farewell address to, uh, what's the mayor's name? Roxy. Roxy and uh, Mary Finch, and uh, we're giving chance, Mary a chance to give her salutations. Well, this is a long-awaited day. It took a long time getting here. It's April 9th, but I'm taking this girl home today. And I'm, I'm really proud of all the good care she's received down here. These guys are responsible for saving her life. And I'm so grateful.